This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our palette knife flower series. In this video, we're going to be doing a beautiful sunflower cake design. It's broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. We're going to prepare the colors for our sunflower cake, and since we're using palette knives to decorate this, we don't really need a lot of each color, so you'll notice the amounts in the bowl are pretty small and we're going to make a blue, green, brown, and two yellows. We're gonna start with the blue, and we're using American Style Buttercream. You can use whatever you like. And we're using the following liquid gel colors. Royal Blue, Lemon Yellow, Sunset Orange, Coal Black, and finally, some Buckeye Brown. We're gonna start with making our blue, and I don't wanna do a really intense shade for this one because it's really just gonna be some background color. So I've got some royal blue and some of my black out here on a lid, and I'm just gonna give myself a couple little specks of that blue and a nice little healthy one of that black because I want it to have a bit of that kind of gray blue vibe, a little bit of that slate feeling. So it's gonna be easier to start with just a little touch of black and add more if I need to. And I don't necessarily wanna make a super dark shade, but we will blend most of our colors with some white. So we don't want it to be too light either. We just want it to have a little bit of a little bit of color, a little something for a yellow to pop off of. Like where that's going, just a tiny touch more black. And that should do the trick. Beautiful. Next, we're gonna make a little bit of a green. So I've added a little yellow out here to my container lid, and I'm just gonna start with some specks of blue and some of my yellow, just about equal of each. And I'm just gonna give it one tiny little speck of my black. I want a relatively intense kind of color. I don't want it to be too light but we're not making that much. So I've started with just a little bit and I'm gonna add more if we need to. And I think the answer to that question is yes, because we're still relatively light. I think I wanna take it a little more towards the yellow. I'm gonna do more yellow than blue. Just a tiny touch of that black. And that's kind of achieving the intensity that I want. You can see it's a nice kind of almost mossy yellow, like it has a, I'm sorry, mossy green that has that nice lean towards the yellow where it's definitely got more yellow in it than blue. And that's gonna be a great color for things like sepals, stems, and leaves. And next I'm gonna make some brown and I'm gonna start with a drop from my Buckeye Brown, if it'll cooperate with me. I think I'm getting to the end of my bottle. There it is. And just a couple of specks of my black because I want it to have that kind of mahogany vibe. And even though we're not making a lot of buttercream, I'm starting with a drop because I want a really intense color. And then I can mix it with some white while I'm working to get a less intense shade. But I can also use this dark shade of brown to add to some of my other colors to make some hues for shading, which is gonna be fantastic. You can see it's really easy. Just with one drop, 
to achieve a really nice deep rich shade with just a little bit of buttercream. And my final two colors are going to be yellows and I'm going to mix them both in the same bowl and I've added a little drop of brown and a little bit of orange over to my lid on the side and give each a toothpick. And I'm just going to start in my bowl with some yellow. What a nice intense sunny lemony beautiful shade. And you'll notice I started with just more color, more buttercream on this one. So we're making a little more color. And that gives me a nice, bright, vibrant shade of yellow. I'm just going to take half of that, swipe it over to the side, leave half of it down here in the bottom where it's easy to mix. And I'm just going to add a little bit of orange. And a tiny touch of that brown in there and we'll make a second shade. And we're looking to get some bright kind of intense hues with these yellows because we're going to use things like our brown and some white buttercream to make some blended shades while we're working. So we just want to make sure that these are nice and intense but also really different from each other and they kind of stand out now but maybe could use a little more distance between each other just so that difference is really really clear while we're working and also with our finished product there we go so just a little bit more orange and it gets it into that really kind of egg yolky territory there we go. So that's a nice color difference between those two. For this project, we're going to use two palette knives. The first is a small diamond shaped one. The second is a large one. So same diamond shape, just a larger blade. If you don't have either of those, you can try using a tapered offset spatula for a similar effect. I've set up two little color palettes for myself. I'm just using some small rectangles of Plexi to do this. If you don't have Plexi, try using a grease resistant coated cake board. You just want a surface that's inert. You don't want it to be warm or cold. So I don't want to use something like my marble that will chill my buttercream and make it harder to work with. And I find these easy to work with because they're clear and easy to wash, but really you can use whatever you have on hand. You just need a nice flat surface so you can work with your buttercream. You need something that's going to stay room temperature and not get too cold or too warm on you. I've loaded my first up with my green, my blue, some white in the middle there so that I have that to work with. And since I'll probably use a touch of my brown and my kind of, um, egg yellow color, I've put a few little swipes of those over to the side just so I can make some nice blended colors. And I've left a nice gap here in the middle where I can work with blending those shades. The second, I've loaded up up here at the top with my nice lemony sunshine yellow, my wonderful egg yellow, and my, my nice deep dark brown. And I've given myself a good dab of white here over in the side and I've left a big clear area in the middle where I can work and blend my colors. A little later when I'm working to make it easier for myself, I might add a touch of green to this one, but we'll see how things go and how they progress. I've loaded mine up on two palettes just to make it easy for me while I'm teaching. If you've got a bigger piece of plexi or a bigger item you're mixing on, like say maybe a cutting board or something of that nature, you can always put them all out on one to make it easiest for yourself. This just makes it a little easier for our camera shots because of the size. So there's no real reason for dividing them up other than making it easier for us to film. Before we get started on our cake, we're going to talk about the techniques that we're going to use. So these are the different motions that we're going to use with our palette knife. And I'll also talk a little bit about how I'm loading them up, but more so while we're working. So the first for our centers, I'm going to use my larger palette knife. You can use the smaller one if it's more comfortable. It's just going to give you different sizes of centers. And when we do some of our half buds, I might change this out for the smaller one as well. 
but they're both really the same type of shape, so it's easy to get the same um, type of stroke. And really what we want to do is have a little bit of our buttercream loaded up on the back, not a lot of depth or height to it. We're not uh, rolling a little pill or anything like that. We're just going to take some nice soft arc motions. So think about making an oval shape and we're gonna do it one stroke at a time and then come back and go the other direction. So you just wanna take like a nice soft arc, soft bridging motion with that palette knife and really make a nice soft sweep. And that's gonna help us create those nice oval shaped centers for the center of our sunflowers. For our petals, for the most part, I'm gonna use my small diamond shaped palette knife. And we're gonna use a couple of different strokes. Some, I'm just gonna go flat and just press it lightly, evenly on the surface and pull. Some, I'm going to use the tip and press down and dig in. And others, I'm going to tilt up and press down and in. And that's gonna give me a variety of different um, kind of looks to those petals and allow me to kind of manipulate them a little bit, put them on at some different angles and get a nice soft kind of blowing in the wind feel for our lovely little sunflowers. To create some stems, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to load up our palette knife and then we're going to kind of trail along the edge and that's going to allow us to get a nice little curved kind of arc motion. The idea of a stem without really putting on a fat bold line and it's just going to allow us to work in some color there and it's going to give us a nice kind of cleaner sharper edge and look to it which will also be a little more defined. So just think about loading up a nice little layer on the back and then instead of holding it flat and pulling we're just going to tilt it so it's on the edge. So we're just kind of trailing an edge of color on there and giving the idea of a stem. For a background, we're gonna go back to our large one and we're gonna do some flat, broad swipes. So I'm just going to get that palette knife coated on the back, nice thin layer, and just really evenly, almost flat, maybe tilt it open just a little bit, pull some nice big flat sweeps. And these are gonna be kind of nondescript. Um, they're gonna be a little amorphous. They're not gonna be exact or really regular or anything like that. We just wanna get the idea of some color back there. Like we have maybe a little bit of sky and some clouds and we'll blend some different shades with that blue by mixing it with the white and give ourselves a really nice diffuse effect, but it'll give something for that yellow to kind of pop off and give it a little contrast rather than just doing our flowers on the surface of a white cake where some of those yellows, especially the lighter shades might get a little lost. The blue will give it something to stand out against. We're also gonna put some leaves on these. So when we're doing our leaves, we just wanna go, big one I find is easier. You can use the small one if the big one scares you a little bit, but we're going to um, take a nice little motion. Think of making like a teardrop where we want it fat at the base and pointed at the top. So that nice kind of classic leaf shape and you wanna follow that edge, do both sides. And then I'm gonna take a little buttercream on the tip of the palette knife and just pull towards the center line of that leaf on each side. And that's gonna give me the look of a leaf that has some veins, some texture to it, and kind of has that characteristic idea and look of a leaf on a sunflower plant. We're gonna get started working on our cake. And as you can see here, I have a six inch round cake. I've got it coated in a nice layer of white buttercream and it's been in the fridge so it's nice and firm. So that means it's gonna be easy for us to work on. And today we're gonna to start by layering on some background color before we kind of um, get in with our design. And I'm just gonna start with my blue just get some out on the surface, work it back and forth a little bit. You'll notice I'm not using a steep angle with my palette knife, right? Not 45 degrees and 45 degrees, just really gently rocking it back and forth. And I'm looking more so just to lightly, here we go, there it is, cover the back. So you can see it's a pretty thin layer. It's not a huge roll or pill, it's just a little bit on there. And I'm gonna start out with just some solid blue. So I'm gonna move over to my cake and just pick a spot. I think I wanna do a nice curved design that follows the edge of my cake. So I'm just gonna start back in here. Anywhere I kind of imagine that there's gonna be stuff, 
I want to put some blue behind it and I'm just going to pull out and multiple angles, just nice broad strokes. And I think of this kind of like stucco. So just anytime you need more, pull out some more blue. If you want to start blending it, pull in a little bit of that white and just make a nice little in-between shade for yourself. It can be fully blended. It doesn't have to be. We're just looking to get some nice big kind of like high drama texture with that color on there. So think kind of like stucco on concrete. That's what I'm going for a little bit. I want some color in this background area and I want something for those beautiful yellows that we made to stand out against. And it doesn't have to be super dark. It just has to kind of be on there. And I don't really want it to be too thick because I don't want it to impede my work. So you notice I'm just using a little bit of color on the back every time. And then just coming in here and just anywhere I need some more, just go in another direction. And then after each of those swipes, sometimes you can get more than one out of one, just go back and load up again. And it's helpful to go kind of in all directions. You can see that gives us a nice, beautiful effect over there. Diffuse, it kind of reminds me a bit of a painting a little bit, which is nice. And that's really the feel that we're kind of going for. Once I've got some of that darker color on there, just pull over some white, blend it with that blue, make a little bit of a lighter shade. I want the more intense color kind of focus where my design is. And I'm just going to do some swipes of that lighter color over here just to blend those edges a tiny bit. But I almost like the rough look of it. So nice and thin. show through from the top of the cake is totally fine. And just take it to that outside edge. And that way you've kind of built up some layers. So you can see there's some areas where I've gone over with more than one layer and it's a little darker and some areas where it's a little more diffuse and we're kind of fading to white over here. And that's really a nice lovely look and I think I might just want to go a tiny touch more darker layer it up just a little bit in some of these areas and get a tiny touch more intensity and that's going to give me a nice varied look so I've got a nice color gradient going on not only by leaving some white space over here blending that color and creating a lighter shade but also creating those thin layers of color builds it up and makes the color more intense. And this is gonna give us a nice little background to create a sunflower design on our cake. Now that we've got our background color on there, we're just gonna kind of mock up our design a little bit. And it's not a huge cake, so I'm not gonna fit a lot of flowers on there. You wanna go more flowers? Definitely recommend doing a bigger size. So something like an eight inch instead of just a six. So I just wanna kind of give myself an idea of where I want things to go. And I think I'm gonna start with a bud up there and probably a little half blossom here and just kind of make an idea of where my stems are going to be, where I'm going to kind of try and pop in a leaf because I want to put some of those things on first and where I'm going to put some nice big flowers. So I think one with a nice big open center and then probably end with a leaf down here as well. And then notice I'm just drawing little circles and ovals for those centers. And I'm just giving myself some little light guidelines so that even if I miss them and they're not covered up, they're really not gonna show up on the finished cake. And most likely no one will ever notice they're there but you. So probably gonna be a bud, one that's kind of like hanging over and kind of half open. And then one that's gonna be our big, beautiful star and I probably just want to kind of move that over a little bit. Just give myself room to do petals on both sides. So once we get that marked on, I'm going to start with my leaves. So now that we have ourselves set up, we're going to start doing some leaves. So I've got my large diamond spatula and I'm going to pull out just a little bit of green. So just grab that with your tip, 
give it a nice little smear. Make sure it's a good texture. If you need to warm things up, warm things up. I'm just taking that nice low angle as I glide back and forth just to really load up that spatula. And you can see nice thin, thin layer there. Not looking to really get a lot on it. And I'm just gonna start in where I marked some of my leaves. So just over here and use the turntable, right? I'm pulling towards myself and spinning away to really kind of help guide your action. And I'm not worried about it getting a huge, like smooth, thick layer on there. I'm just worried about getting the idea of the outline of this leaf because we're gonna go back in and add some texture. And so then we're gonna do the opposite side. So think, get in there, little bit of an angle. So tipping it forward just a little bit with that tip and getting in there at an angle. And you can see now we've got kind of the idea of a little leaf there. And I'm gonna take it then and just build some up a little bit, roll back and forth, 45, get more of a pill of frosting going on. Doesn't have to be huge, but just a little more volume there on the tip. And then I'm gonna come in and draw a line down the center, kind of like we practiced and talked about on our sheet. And then pull from the outside edge on each of those. So kind of at a nice angle towards that center line. If you need to, build up a little more frosting and do the same thing the other direction. And I'm okay if it digs in a little bit to that blue and gives us some color, but you really do want it to be green. You can mix in some white, mix in some yellow, even some brown. There we go. So we just wanna kind of create a ridge. We don't wanna dig in too far. If you do, just go right back over it. And I just wanna kind of go down into the area where I know my petals are gonna end up being because if I've got a nice oval here that's gonna be that fat center, the petals are going to be on top of the base of the leaf. So I don't have to worry about a beautiful finish on that base. I just wanna get that nice texture on there, which here we can turn it. You can see a little better this way, where it has the idea of a leaf that has those beautiful ridges and veins in it. And I'm gonna go in and pop the tip of one in over here. So I'm gonna pull a little more color down Maybe this time, let's see, blend in maybe just a little bit of white. Nice flat layer on there. And we're just trying to cover the surface with a thin layer, kind of like we did with our blue. Turn your cake if you need to, to get the angle for the other side. Mix in a little yellow, just to give these leaves a little bit of variation on the color. Get my little pill going and just pull down the center and then make those nice little veins right there on the side. I'm going down the other direction, maybe go a little white, kind of create some shading. Think one side, one color, the other side, another. And that'll give us a nice little varied look. Give just a little bit of difference in the shades of green that we've got going on here. And that way we've got some little kind of ideas of leaves and some things that'll be peeking through in the background. And then if we like this and we're ready to move on, we'll start doing our little petals for our buds and our half blossoms and our big blossom down there at the bottom. Now we're gonna start putting in some petals and we wanna kinda do our petals in rounds. I'm gonna start with some of my darker kind of egg yellow
color and I just want to kind of load it up. Get a nice little layer on there. Get that spatula coated, not huge, not too thick. And I'm just going to come up here where I'm going to do my bud and I'm going to do my little soft art. So we just want to go right there and start building up a layer of this buttercream. We want the idea of that kind of rounded shape. So we want to just do nice, light pressure, thin layers. And at first it's going to look greenish and that's totally cool because we've got blue in the background and then we're putting yellow on top of it. So it would only be natural for it to look a little greenish. But when you get enough of a layer on there, that green will disappear and you'll really have that beautiful yellow vibe. So think about nice kind of like soft arc motion with the tip of that. And then we're gonna go in with some actual petals. For these, I wanna go rolling back and forth, build up that nice, there we go, hill of frosting. So we've got that nice roll on our palette knife. And for these, I'm gonna do the ones where I'm pointing it down and I'm gonna dig the tip in a little bit. So I just wanna kind of go down and dig in. And you can see that gives me that nice, beautiful, built up roll kind of swipe. Lovely little petal there. Next one, pull over a little of my other color, roll that back and forth, build it up. And I'm going to go the other direction on the outside edge. And you can see this is starting to have that shape of a bud. It has some depth. It has some texture. Um, it's going to be really lovely, right? We're going to make another blended color. So a little of my egg yellow, a little bit of white. Get that on there. Build it up. Oh, there we go. Got to find the middle so I can show you. Build up that pill. And then instead of going kind of to the side, here we're going to dig straight down in so we want to go kind of right there pull in and i'm just going to keep making these cute little swipes over here take a little bit of my beautiful bright lemony yellow do the same thing and it'll probably only take about four or five of these to really finish this off and that will give us a nice little bud for the one in the center because we've kind of been going outside edge outside edge working our way in I'm going to tilt it back now so instead of having the point facing down and touching the cake it's going to be the back end of the spatula so just turn your cake so that it's in a nice natural wrist position and we can do one right there in the center and that's going to give us a nice little idea of a beautiful little closed bud. You can put more petals on it if you want to, or you can just leave it as is. I think maybe we need one more stylish one off to the side there. But you can see that gives us beautiful layers of color. It gives us some nice texture, and it gives us that idea of a bud that's about to burst open. So now that we've got the petals for our little button, I'm gonna start working on the ones for the half blossom. So I'm just gonna load up some color. This one's a little more of my lemon yellow. It's some of my leftover from the other stuff I've got going, going on from my first little bud. Build up that nice pill. And my bud is gonna be over here and I want it to kind of hang and droop over. So what we're gonna do is the petals for the backside first then we'll layer on the center and then we'll do the ones that are going to be on the outside edge kind of facing the viewer and us last so we want to come in here i'm going to start by kind of digging in on the edges just like i did on my bud so tip down angled out away from myself and kind of away from that center and pulling here we go towards ourselves so just kind of start with that on either side of where you want that little face to be. So kind of think about it kind of hanging, drooping over, beautiful. And as we go, we're gonna change up the style of petals we do. So put some more color on there, pick another slightly different shade. Don't be afraid to blend and mix these colors. And then 
once we go towards the center, we're going to do the ones where we tip the back end back. And especially here, since we're kind of on top of something else, that's gonna give us kind of thicker petals that will help cover up the green, kind of coat it so it's not showing through on us. And I'm not gonna worry if they feel a little long right now because I'm gonna cover the back edge of these with some brown. So just kind of go work your colors, looking beautiful, right? We can kind of see like we have a nice little row here it's looking nice. I want to just go a little kind of thicker though because I still have some kind of green showing through. So maybe just with a few where I've mixed in some white, go a little lighter. A little thinner. So just a little lighter touch. If you build up a really big pill and you press in really firmly, you're gonna make bigger, fatter petals. If you build it up a little smaller and press lighter, you can make thinner, skinnier ones. So you can kind of see that action going on. And that helps to cover up some of that green and get us kind of started to a good place where we can now put the brown in. So I'm just gonna quickly clean off my spatula so we're nice and clean. Take a tiny touch of that brown over here just play with it just to get it nice and warmed up. Make sure it's spreadable. Just get that nice thin coat on here. And since we're doing a small center, I'm going to use my small spatula. So just a nice light layer there. And if you're a little bit scared at first, that's fine. Think about where you want this to go where you want the back edge to be and that's where we're going to aim for and if we've got a little bit of petal action going on there you can always build up the buttercream just a little thicker and just kind of think about where you want that to be and so i'm going to come in here almost flat i'm just going to open up a little bit towards the petals and smear that in there and you can see that gives us a nice little start of a center just work at whatever angle you need to. Spin your cake, use your turntable, build your frosting back up on your spatula so you can get that in there and just really paint that little center in. And we wanna keep it nice and narrow because we're going to then go across and do more petals on top of it. You may need to allow your cake to sit for a bit in the fridge. If things are uh, getting a little soft for you or whatever, this might be a good time to take a break. Or you can go down here and you can work some more on some more of your yellow petals. So we're just gonna go in, take my leftover color, come in here and start where my big flower is gonna be. So I've got a big area down here for a nice big flower, and I just wanna start putting in some petals. So I'm gonna use all of them. I'm gonna dig in from the outside edge first. I'm gonna do some flat, and I'm gonna do some with the spatula angled back. So we're going to put in some nice big swipes. We want some drama. And I wanna get right next to the outside edge of the cake and really make it look like it's full. And for the outside petals, the ones that are really further away, you'll notice I'm doing the ones where I'm pointing down and digging in because that's really a great way to build up some petals that have some texture and depth on that kind of far edge. and trail off towards the center. And then you can cover up the ends of them with the ones that are the opposite direction. So the ones where you're pointing the back end of the spatula down towards the cake. And 
And don't be afraid to, to pull a little brown in. Can seem a little daring, a little dangerous, but this is a good time to do it. We're working on this really big flower, so we're gonna have a lot of petals on there, and I want some of them to be a little darker, have a little deeper, richer color to them. So don't be afraid to pull in that brown and work a little bit with that. And I'm gonna go down here at the bottom and just continue working. So building up nice amount of color in that spatula, pull down towards myself. I just wanna kind of look at things and just make sure anytime you're blending colors and you've got multiple shades going on just kind of make sure the ones that are next to each other are a little different so a little lighter a little darker a little more lemon yellow a little more egg yellow we want to really have a nice kind of varied look to these so vary up the length of the petals too don't make them all the same size Anything that's too static is going to look a little artificial. Also, don't be afraid to bring in your white and make some lighter shades as well. If your little palette that you're working with gets a little busy, a little muddy, or anything like that, and you need to, just take a second and clean it off. And if your cake gets a little soft, you can always take a second and put it in the fridge and let it set up for you. But you can see now, I've got this going on, and I've got a nice little ring of these little petals that I've kind of dug into with the tip and it's got kind of a wild free look. Think about a little bit like a lion's mane, like we're making this big mane around this void in the center and we're working towards the center and that is looking really gorgeous and really beautiful. I'm going to do a quick row of petals that are just kind of flat or angled up so the back end of the spatula is towards the cake and then we'll put on our center. So just try and mix things up so that you have a nice variation in colors and hues. And when you're blending, don't be afraid to let it be a little marbled. That's gonna give you a really nice effect. And try and make sure you put some that are lighter on top of some that are darker, get some medium tones in there. Just use some of it, kind of the pure color we mixed in the beginning. And when you're doing these, don't be afraid to load up that spatula and really get those kind of nice, beautiful, thick pills of frosting that will give you some nice high drama petals. So anytime I want it just a little bit thinner, not so fat, I'll just go flat. And if I want them to have more depth, more drama, be a little bit bigger, take up a little more surface area, I'm gonna angle the back end down into the cake. That allows the point to dig in and spread the frosting out. So especially with those, if you build up a really nice big roll of frosting on the back, you're gonna get some really nice, beautiful fat petals. 
I'm just going to keep going all the way around this area that I kind of drew in there. I'll go flat on this one, nice and skinny. And just keep blending in color. Beautiful. And it's okay if your flowers, your leaves, and everything else kind of run and crash into each other. Don't be afraid to let your designs just kind of take you where they will. Sometimes those are the best creative spaces. So you definitely need a little bit of one over there. So I think I've got a nice layer of petals. So probably two, three layers depending on the area where it feels like a nice, beautiful open flower. And I'm gonna be ready to put my centers on and to put the petals on the backside of this open one that's kind of peeking out from behind and do some of the things like maybe some sepals and a nice stem over here. So I just wanna take a minute, especially if you've been working for a while, put it in the fridge for 10, 15 minutes, let it chill up so that the work you've already done is easy to work on top of. So our cake has been in the fridge for a few minutes we've got it nice and firm again, and that's gonna make it easier for us to work now. I'm gonna start out with a little bit of my green, and I'm just going to move this around a little bit. I wanna make some little sepals, so we're basically just gonna do the same thing we did where we were making petals, and we're gonna do them at the base of that little bud. And then we're gonna give ourselves a little kind of hint of a stem, and then we'll go back to working with our yellow again and some of our browns. So I just wanna come up here, right where my butt is, rotate your cake so it's in a nice comfortable position, back into the spatulas down towards the cake so we can just press in and make some nice little sepals right there at the base. Don't be afraid to mix in a little extra color, make some of them a little lighter, get some yellow in there on some of them some white, just so they're not all perfectly the same shade, especially when they're right next to each other. Just go on either side, get some in the middle, and mix up those colors. And if you need to, you can even shorten them out on there. A lot of times I'll just use my finger or you can use another spatula just to scrape off some of the excess. And that'll ensure that those little sepals are kind of short and stumpy. There we go. So you can see that kind of covers it up gives that little hint that we're looking at it from the side because we can see that green underneath like it's just starting to open up. So I'm just going to put a nice thin layer on my spatula and then I'm just going to come out from the back and just like we talked about before when we went through our skills we're just going to angle the spatula open a little bit and kind of use the outside edge of our um, of our palette knife to just glide along the surface and I'm just going to use the turntable and rotate a little bit and you'll see it leaves a little trail of frosting in there and the more I angle the thinner that'll be so if it's just a little faint line right now can barely see it I'm just going to relax just close that angle up a little bit 
and that should give me just a little thicker hint of a line there. There we go. And it doesn't have to be completely solid. We just want kind of the idea of a stem coming off of this. We're going to end up covering quite a bit of this area up with the back of the other flower. So we just want this kind of maybe peeking through in one space or two. So I opened it up to the left the first time. Now I'm going to go to the right. And I've loaded up just a little bit of a lighter color. And you can see then, that gives us the idea of a cute little stem there. It's not completely solid, it's got a little texture to it, a little bit of two different colors, and you can keep going just nice and gentle in there if you want to close that in, get rid of the blue that's in the middle, and extend it a little more. And you can see that gives us a cute little stem, it's kind of wispy, watercolory, and matches the vibe of the rest of the cake. Now that we've done some work with our green, we're going to go back in here in this half blossom and put some petals right on the back side of it. If you need to add some more color or depth to that center, this is a good time to do that. But because we're going to be on this kind of like front facing edge, I want to mix my colors with a healthy dose of white because we want them to be a little lighter, like maybe the sun is hitting it from this side because this is the side that we're viewing it from. So kind of darker petals in the background, lighter ones in the foreground. So I'm going to take some of my nice sunshiny yellow and just mix a nice little healthy dose of white in there and get some going. So just roll that up. Where are you? There we go. Get a nice little roll going, get some white mixed in with that yellow, and then we're going to start placing. And I want to start over here on the outside edge, just kind of back a little bit. So we don't want to be lined up with the back edge of that um, brown that's our center. We want to be a little behind it. So you can see if you line up the back of your spatula where the end of that little pillow color is, pull it back like at least a quarter, even a half an inch, we're going to start off to the side a little bit, kind of up above it, and just go in there and make some little petals. There we go. And so we're going to go on top of here. You want to leave some space because you want that brown to be peeking through. You want to be able to see it. So some of them kind of lighter, some of them darker, some of them the intense full color. And we want to just kind of go in here anywhere we need to. So we're just going to do some shorter petals. So I've just kind of cut off the bottom, just swiped it with my finger so it's just a little shorter. That way I don't have to worry about it getting too long back here. And just do some that are a darker or brighter color right next to some that are a lighter color. And you can see my brown is kind of peeking through there. So we get the idea of in center and a flower that's kind of folded over in half, right? And it's not completely facing your viewer. And just keep blending colors, nice in between shades. That way, you get some nice variation in those colors. And anytime you need to, make a little half petal, something that's a little shorter, just remove some of the excess off of the base. There we go. Add some white as you go, blend. You don't even have to blend it completely. You can leave it kind of diffuse, but you can see it's really quick to just go in and fill in the back there. And then a little later, when these have chilled, we can even put some little sepals on the back of this as well. Now we're going to work on the center of our big sunflower and this is one we want to do in parts and we're going to want to make kind of a couple of nice big strokes and just take our time. We really want to get a nice layer of that brown buttercream thin on the back of this spatula. So just nice soft gentle angle, push it back and forth until you get loaded up 
check it before you go to work on your cake. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And when you come in here, just take that nice soft arc motion. And if you need to, if you're worried about the back at all, just kind of clean it off or even use your smaller one, which I may switch to in just a minute. But I want to just go in with a nice big, nice big stroke. Just any way you need to, to kind of create that. And don't worry too much about the tips of your petals. Just go in there. Work any way you need to. There we go. That's a nice one. And get it in there. And don't be afraid to blend some other colors in. Pull in a little yellow, pull in a little green. And if you need to, tip your spatula at a little angle. So you can see I've covered a lot of surface area. I'm going to switch to my smaller spatula just because that's going to give me some good control and allow me to go in a little bit finer with my motions. And really kind of make a nice defined area here in the center and we're going to go in and put in some more petals so if it gets a little messy don't worry and use your turntable and as you layer up some color and see it's easy to kind of carve into it let the tip kind of carve in and create some little ridges and that gives us a nice kind of oval shape going on there can then pull in just a little bit of yellow. You can even pull in a little bit of green and just create some kind of little highlights, just a nice little soft arc there, just to kind of give us a little hint of some seeds. Maybe the light hitting it, throw in a little white and it gives it a nice, beautiful painted feel. So we're going to put another light layer of petals on our sunflower just to kind of fill in, help define that center area. And this is where we're really going to use those kind of flat strokes that we talked about when we were doing our techniques. I'm actually going to pull the other direction. So we're going to go just pick a nice spot where I feel like maybe I need a petal, maybe I need to cover up a little bit of brown, or I just need a little pop of color between two. And I'm just going to go. So line the point up with the edge. Smash it down flat. If you need to, you can angle the spatula and just pull gently away. And that's going to give us these nice little tapered, kind of thready, beautiful petals. Just pulling away from the center. Ever so nice and lightly. And I'm going to keep that spatula just almost as flat as I can. So just really... Just beautiful, just kind of the idea of some little petals there. Maybe one right up there too. You can see that just added a little bit of nice light color there. I've got one tiny little spot there where I've got some blue peeking through and that's just gonna be a spot for the tip of my spatula. So I'm just gonna go in and just create a little dab. So it looks like there's something going behind that leaf and I fill in that little hole there that was giving me a void. I'm just gonna keep going around it anywhere where I've got a little color showing through that I don't want, or I feel like we need a little bit more volume or texture. I'm just gonna put in some of these delicate little petals 
right around the center of my flower. Maybe right here. I've got a lot of that lemon yellow vibe going on. I'm just going to put in a little bit of that kind of egg. Just anywhere you need to, anywhere you want to. It's a good place to practice them. Gorgeous. So that really helps to fill in, make it feel nice and full, give it some nice flow. We've got petals going all directions and it really helps shape up that center a little bit if you got a little off. We're going to put some finishing touches on our creation with just a little bit of green. And I just want to do some cute little short sepals on the back of my little half blossom. So just get a nice little roll of buttercream going up on my tiny spatula. And I need to just shorten the back of that just come in here and just right behind where you did your petals probably three will do just same as always anytime we're putting details next to each other just make sure you blend a new color for things that are going right next to each other so you get a little variation it'll help those details stand out from each other Help them really read to your viewer. And really set these off. And so then the last thing we can do here is give ourselves the idea of just a little stem coming out of this as well. So I've just built up a tiny bit of frosting and kind of go across here, just slight angle. Open it up a little bit and just kind of trail along the surface. We'll just do that where it kind of open to the left and then the right. Just get some nice soft color on there and just kind of trail off towards the edge of your cake. There we go. And that'll give us the look of a nice little stem where everything's kind of meeting together. And the idea of these little heads of sunflowers kind of leaning over into the sun. And we've got this big kind of glorious one that's open and full and beautiful right there as a nice centerpiece. So there we have our beautiful palette knife sunflower cake. You can see we've got lots of drama with the different blends of our colors, just making a few simple shades of yellow and mixing that with your white as something to lighten it with and your brown as something to give it a deeper, darker, richer shade really creates a lot of different uh, combinations of colors that really help those petals stand out and also gives your design some shadow and some areas of light, which is really important when you're trying to get a lot of details that are very similar in terms of the technique and look to stand out next to each other. So we've got a beautiful blossom, a little half one that's draping over, and our big bold one here. And we could even keep going. We could add more leaves and buds up top if we wanted to. The important thing with designs like this is basically you want to start with the back, so what you decide is gonna be furthest away from the viewer, which in this case for us was our leaves and our bud, and then start working towards the front. So our big, beautiful, bold blossom is kind of the last thing that we worked on, and the back side of this little half blossom as well. So just kind of try and plan out your designs when you're creating them and work from the back to the front. And that's a great way to layer up colors, layer up design features, and really make your work easier for you. You can see with a few simple colors, a little time, and a palette knife, you can create something really beautiful and dynamic. That's all for this lesson on palette knife sunflowers. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to try another, try checking out our basic palette knife flower lesson. It's a great place to start. 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.